Hare Krishna, dear devotees, we will continue our readings from Beyond Birth and Death. And we had been reading chapters one and chapter two, and today we are on chapter number three. So we'll begin. I will start sharing this link with you here shortly. And you can read it along. So today the chapter is chapter three, liberation from the material planets. I'm going to switch some of the views off here and start with the prayers. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha Beyond Birth and Death by Shula Prabhupada Chapter 3 Liberation from Material Planets the jnanis and yogis are generally impersonalist, and although they attain the temporary form of liberation by merging into the impersonal effulgence, the spiritual sky, according to Srimad Bhagavatam, their knowledge is not considered pure. By penances, austerities, and meditation, they can rise up to the platform of the supreme ab absolute. But as has been explained, they again fall down to the material world because they have not taken Krishna's personal features seriously. Unless one worships the lotus feet of Krishna, he again has to descend to the material platform. The ideal attitude should be, I am your eternal servitor. Please let me somehow engage in your devotional service. Krishna is called Ajita or unconquerable. For no one can conquer God. But according to Srimad Bhagavatam, one can conquer him. One with this attitude easily conquers the Supreme. Srimad Bhagavatam also recommends that we give up this futile process to measure the Supreme. We cannot even measure the limitations of space. What to speak of the Supreme? It is not possible to measure the length and breadth of Krishna by one's minuscule knowledge. And one who arrives at this conclusion is considered intelligent by Vedic literature. One should come to understand submissively that he is very insignificant segment of the universe. Abandoning the endeavor to understand the Supreme by limited knowledge or mental speculation, we should become submissive and hear the Supreme through authoritative sources such as Bhagavad Gita or through the lips of a realized soul. 
in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjun is hearing about God from the lips of Sri Krishna himself. In this way, Arjun set the criterion for understanding the Supreme by submissive hearing. It is our position to hear the Bhagavad Gita from the lips of Arjuna or his bona fide representative, the spiritual master. After hearing, it is necessary to practice this acquired knowledge in daily life. My dear Lord, you are inconquerable, the devotee prays, but by this process, by hearing, you are conquered. God is inconquerable, but he is quoted by the devotee, he is conquered by the devotee who abandons mental speculation and listens to authoritative sources. According to the Brahma Samhita, there are two ways of acquiring knowledge, the ascending process and the descending process. By the ascending process, one is elevated by knowledge acquired by himself. In this way, one thinks, I don't care for any authorities or books. I will attain knowledge myself by meditation, philosophy, etc. In this way, I will understand God. The other process, the descending process, involves receiving knowledge from higher authorities. The Brahma Samhita states that if one takes to the ascending process and travels at the speed of mind and wind for millions of years, he will still end up not knowing him. For him, the subject matter will remain elusive and inconclusive. But that subject matter is given in the Bhagavad Gita, Ananya Chetaha. Krishna says to meditate on him without deviation from the path of devotional service in submission. For one who worships him in this way, tasyaham sulabaha, I become easily available. This is the process. If one works for Krishna 24 hours a day, Krishna cannot forgive him. By becoming submissive, he can attract the attention of God. As Guru Maharaj Bhaktisiddhan Saraswati used to say, don't try to see God. Is God to come and stand before us like a servant just because we want to see him? This is not submissive way. We have to oblige him by our love and service. The proper process for approaching Krishna was given to humanity by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Rupa Goswami, his first disciple, appreciated it. Rupa Goswami was a minister in the Mohammedan government but he left the government to become a disciple of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When he first went to see the Lord, Rupa Goswami approached him with the following verse. Namo Mahavadanyaya, Krishna Prema Pradayate, Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya, Namne Gauratushe Namaha. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya, who is more magnanimous than any other avatar even Krishna himself. Because he's bestowing freely that no one else has ever given the pure love of Krishna. Rupa Goswami called Chaitanya Mahaprabhu the most munificent, the most charitable personality because he was offering the most precious thing of all very cheaply, love of God. All we, want, we all want Krishna and are hankering for, after him. Krishna is the most attractive, the most beautiful, the most opulent, the most powerful, and the most learned. That is the object of our hankering. We are hankering after the beautiful, the powerful, the learned, the wealthy. Krishna is the reservoir of all this. So we need only turn our attention toward him and we will get everything, everything, whatever we want. Whatever is our heart's desire will be fulfilled by this process of Krishna consciousness. One, one who dies in Krishna consciousness, as stated before, entrance into Krishna Loka, the supreme abode where Krishna resides. This is guaranteed. At this point, one may ask what the advantage is in going to that planet, and Krishna himself answers, Mam Upetya Punar Janma. Dukhalayam ashashvatam napnuvanti mahatmanaha samsiddhim paramam gataha. After attaining me, the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection. This is from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 8, verse number 15. 
The material world is certified by Sri Krishna, the creator, as Dukhalayam, full of miseries. How then can we make it comfortable? Is it possible to make this world comfortable by the so-called advancement of science? No, this is not possible. As a result, we do not even wish to know what these miseries are. And the miseries, as stated before, are birth, old age, disease, and death. And because we cannot make a solution to them, we try to set them aside. Science has no power to solve these miseries that are always giving us trouble. Instead, they divert our attention to making of spaceships or atomic bombs. The solutions to these problems is given here in the Bhagavad Gita. If one attains to Krishna's platform, he does not have to return again to this earth of birth and death. We should try to understand that this place is full of miseries. It takes a certain amount of developed consciousness to understand this. Cats and dogs and hogs cannot understand that they are suffering. Man is called a rational animal, but his rationality is being used to further his animalistic propensities instead of to find out how to get liberation from this miserable condition. Here Krishna explicitly states that one who comes to him will never be reborn to suffer miseries again. Those great souls who come to him have attained the highest perfection of life, which alleviates the living entity from the suffering of conditioned existence. One of the differences between Krishna and an ordinary being is that an ordinary entity can be in only one place at a time, but Krishna can be everywhere in the universe and yet also in his own abode simultaneously. Krishna's abode in the transcendental kingdom is called Golok Vrindavan. The Vrindavan in India is the same Vrindavan descended on this earth. When Krishna descends himself by his own internal potency, his dham or abode also descends. In other words, when Krishna descends on his earth, he manifests himself in that particular land. Despite this, Krishna's abode remains eternally in the transcendental sphere, in the Vaikuntas. In this verse, Krishna proclaims that one who comes to his abode in the Vaikuntas never has to take birth again in the material world. Such a person is called a Mahatma. The word Mahatma is generally heard in the West in connection with Mahatma Gandhi. But we should understand that Mahatma is not the title of a politician. Rather, Mahatma refers to the first class Krishna conscious man who is eligible to enter into the abode of Krishna. The Mahatma's perfection is this, to utilize the human form of life and the resources of nature to extricate oneself from the cycle of birth and death. An intelligent person knows that he does not want miseries, but they are inflicted upon him by force. As stated before, we are always in a miserable condition due to this mind, body, natural disturbances, or other living entities. There's always some kind of misery inflicted upon us. This material world is meant for miseries. Unless the misery is there, we cannot come to Krishna consciousness. Miseries are actually an impetus and help to elevate us to Krishna consciousness. An intelligent man can question why these miseries are inflicted on him by force. However, modern civilization's attitude is, let me suffer, let me cover it by some intox intoxication, that's all. But as soon as the intoxication is over, the miseries return. It is not possible to make a solution to the miseries of life by artificial intoxication. The solution is made by Krishna consciousness. One may point out that although the devotees of Krishna are trying to enter Krishna's planet, everyone is interested in going to the moon. Isn't going to the moon also perfection? The tendency to travel to other planets is always present in the living entity. One name for the living entity is Sarvagata. Sarvagata, which means one who wants to travel everywhere. Travel is part of the nature of the living entity. 
the desire to go to the moon is not a new thing. The yogis also are interested in entering the highest planet. But in the Bhagavad Gita 8.16, Krishna points out that this will not be of any help. Abrahma bhuvana loka punaravartino arjuna mamu petyetu konteya punarjanmana vityate. From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery, wherein repeated birth and death takes place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. The universe is divided into higher, middle, and lower planetary systems. The earth is considered to be a member of the middle planetary system. Krishna points out that even if one enters into the highest planet of all, called Brahmaloka, there is still repetition of birth and death. Other planets in the universe are full of living entities. We should not think that we are here and that all the other planets are vacant. From experience, we can see that no place on earth is vacant of living entities. If we dig deep down into the earth, we find worms. If we go, if we go dig deep, into the water, we find aquatic. If we go deep into the water, we find aquatics. If we go into the sky, we find so many birds. How is it possible to conclude that other planets have no living entities? But Krishna points out that even if we enter into those planets where demigods decide, we still will be subjected to death. Again, Krishna repeats that upon reaching his planet, one need not take birth again. We should be very serious about attaining our eternal life full of bliss and knowledge. We have forgotten that this is actually our aim of life, our real interest. Why have we forgotten? We have simply been entrapped by the material glitter, by skyscrapers, by, by skyscrapers, big factories, and political play. Although we know that however big we build skyscrapers, we will not be able to live there indefinitely. We should not spoil our energy in building mighty industries and cities to further entrap ourselves in material nature. Rather, our energy should be used to develop Krishna consciousness in order to attain a spiritual body whereby we may enter into Krishna's planet. Krishna consciousness is not a religious formula or some spiritual recreation. It is the most important part of the living entity, Jai. So with this, we come to the end of chapter three from the book, Beyond Birth and Death, written in English by Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining the call and also thank you for those who are watching us online. Vanchukalpa Tarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha, Patita Nam Pavani Bhyo, Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha, Gopi Manande Hari Hari Bo. So we're going to switch off this call and the conference now. Hari Krishna.